there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Can you grab a cup of tea and join me for a while? It would be so wonderful if you could. Just welcome everybody, the new visitors, I was going to say the new visitors, the new viewers, uh, the regular viewers, and um, like me, one of the older viewers. So glad you're here. Come right on in. We try to deal with anything and everything that affects the home. And you know what? That's anything and everything. So uh, come on board and I guess I'll just, right off the top, if Christ is the center of your home, it's going to be a whole lot better home. And could you imagine if a huge, huge percentage of the homes of America really did make the Lord the center, how it would change everything. It would change our school system. It would change our judicial system. It would change police and so forth. You wouldn't need as many of them, that kind of thing. So that's what we're working for, and we're very glad you're on board. I have a guest today who is a, a counselor, a certified coach, a certified counselor, a corporate chaplain. I don't even know for sure what they do. And uh, she is busy out there, and I think what she's really doing is just helping to lift people up to another level. And I so very much believe in this kind of thing. It's like a... Uh, you know, a good seminar or something. I really believe in seminars where you can go and get information that you didn't have and it will make your life better, might make your job better, your, your parenting skills better or as a part of a marriage relationship. So uh, I'm anxious to meet her, I, for you to meet her. I just now met her myself. Her name is Dr. Sandy McKenzie. She's been published in uh, journals and newspapers and so forth and so I'm anxious for you to meet her. And I'm going to join Stephanie in a minute. We're making an Australian dish. Now, doesn't that make us just sound so international? Uh, the, the name of the recipe, though, doesn't sound so, you know, uppity. Isn't it crashed what? Crashed hot. crashed hot potatoes. Never seen anything like it. Anxious to taste it. But before I join her, I've got this necklace on today on this black. Isn't that pretty? That's the Breast Cancer Awareness Cross. And you'll see the little pink ribbon that so many people do know. Uh, they, they can look at that and know that Stan means to be aware of breast cancer, which is cer certainly a scourge. But there are great strides being made. And if you know someone or you yourself have been a victim of uh, breast cancer or a loved one, and I have several, and I have a feeling you do as well. We're offering these gorgeous necklaces for $20, that a gift of at least $20. If you want to make it $1,000, that's okay, isn't it, Stephanie? Yes. Yes, and if you want to mail that in, it's Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or, write, or call me at 1-800-229-0059. There'll be someone there to answer the phone and take your information and we'll get it out to you. And, and I'm not going to be offering it after this program, but I would like to say supplies are limited. And I suggest if this is something you want, you do it right now. Okay, aren't you excited about this? Yes, I am. This they look delicious. Oh, I don't know why, why are they Australian though. I, I haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> I, I just uh, trying to think of a dish that you know you think of with Australia. Now, there's so many dishes that you relate to the country, but mm -hmm. this is the first one. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I just have some um, extra virgin olive oil. I'm just gonna um, splash on the pan here. One thing I really do like, if you're having company, is to have something a little. Different. different, yeah, and, and you, you know what? Potatoes are so economical, mm -hmm. so economical. So if you can figure out many different ways to make them, because this is our coupon girl. Yes. So we just have um, baby reds mm -hmm. that we boiled; they're mm -hmm. fork tender. So we're just going to put them on here. And why are you backing up? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not a weapon. To do this. <laughs> this is trial and error. Yeah. Wasn't so it? you just want to—you don't need as much force as you think because I killed the first <laughs> potato that I did earlier. That you potato just, is crying. Yeah, so you just smash it. Uh -huh. That's it, okay? Uh -huh. We're going to do that to um, six potatoes here. Just don't use all your force. Yeah. I just absolutely killed the potato. Yeah, I love the red potatoes. Yeah, oh, I love 
any carbs. And we will take these so the way the good. recipe said, but I think that our really smart viewers out there can figure out you can do a lot of oh, different stuff for with sure. this. You're going to be able to do all kinds you of different things. You could have an Italian and, flavor because oh, yeah. potatoes, you, they're just potatoes yeah, like a you pasta. Could do then Mexican, you do what you want with you it. Could, oh, you could do all kinds of fresh herbs. You could do all kinds of things. And I was going to say, especially when you have company, mm -hmm. you like to do something different, and that something different usually is with the vegetable. And they smash a little better if you let them cool a little. Mm -hmm. I took them right out of the hot and smashed, and they kind of just crumbled mm -hmm. a little bit. So let so them this cool one will be for better. a little bit. Yeah. So we're going to um, put just a little bit of olive oil on each one. There it goes. There it goes. I'll get that Okay, later. it's right at your foot, so yeah. I can't reach it. That's fine. Just a little bit. And like I said earlier, drizzle. your imagination can run wild oh, with this. Oh, for sure. A little bit with of salt. The, uh, flavors you put on it. Yeah, any flavors that you want. That's what's so great about cooking is you can adapt it to your own. Uh, let's do some garlic salt. Oh, you know, uh, recently, I think we'll have some pictures of it someday. Stephanie did a huge, huge dessert bar for yes. a shower. Yes, and my future daughter. She was so pooped. <laughs> oh my gosh, She's I was still exhausted. Not over it. I made Oreo truffles, I made cheesecake, I made lemon bars, I made chocolate shells. Yeah, she said, Can I borrow some pans? I'll be my guest. How many hours? Oh, I worked. Because she did so many different yeah, recipes. I, I worked a whole Friday afternoon, and then I worked all Saturday almost getting it ready. And I'm going to put a little paprika on here, make it pretty. Mm -hmm. And then all you do is you throw this in the oven for about 20 minutes and let it bake. It gets crusty on the out, yummy and crusty on the outside, mm -hmm. and then it's nice and soft on the inside. And let's, oh, look at the way those. Hey, look at that. Yes. That's so yummy. Mmm. Oh, I think this would be so much fun to have when you have company. That's yeah, that? something different. You could put all different cheeses on here. Oh my! Didn't? Mm. Isn't that good? That one is out of the park. <laughs> I don't have the words to tell you how good <laughs> that is. Oh my! What a treat! To that's um, a home run. I'm telling you. Yep. I've been paying attention to the baseball game today, if you can't tell. <laughs> oh, who's playing? The Rays and Baltimore. Oh, she, we're in Florida. She's mm -hmm. a big Rays fan. I've never been to one of their games myself, mm -hmm. but it's too slow for me. I like basketball where you're going like this mm -hmm. and this and this. And I don't know. It's just way too slow. So, I enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, home run right here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> one more question. Yes. Were they winning? No. Oh. They were down well, by the time nothing. you see this, the game will be over. Long Otherwise, over. we would ask you to pray, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you want this recipe, and maybe you could just follow because it's so simple, but if you want it, we'll email it to you or we'll mail it to you. Just let us know you want it. It's called, again, Crash Hot, hot Potatoes. Crash Hot Potatoes. Mm -hmm. Just put the Australian dish. We'll know what it means. Mm -hmm. But it really is good. Stay with me. I want you to meet Sandy. Coming right up. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I've uh, been in touch with Sandy for a few weeks, but just met her just a few minutes ago. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks today. for those mutual friends. Yes. Makes uh, the whole world just a little bit better. We both have a friend better. named Lee Bueno, and yes. Lee told me about Sandy, and Lee is a missionary, and yes. we go back a long ways. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. She's got almost uh, an incredible history, just like you do. Just touches people all over the world. Yeah. That's and the Damons in, mm -hmm. in Fort Worth, they said to tell you hello. So, yes, yeah. it just keeps getting nicer and nicer the it's more people the we see. Family of God. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, were you raised in a Christian home? I was raised mm -hmm. in a Christian home. I have uh, not quite the heritage you do, mm -hmm. but I do have an uncle 
uh, on my mom's side, who's an ordained minister, on my dad's side, uh, ministers, chaplains, mm -hmm. uh, missionaries. So, and my great grandfather was an ordained minister who also rode the horse through the Tennessee <laughs> mountains, carrying a rifle. He was also the uh, rifle and a Bible. <laughs> the rifle and Bible. He was the area postmaster, so he would carry the mail and Bibles and multitasker. Was, yeah, 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 that was not such a settled area back, what, a hundred years ago, so he does. So anyway, it's got, got some heritage of that on me. It's wonderful, and I, I like to really stress this to the viewers, that what I know about my own history doesn't go back that far, just grandparents, but that it only takes one godly life mm. to completely steer generations for mm -hmm. decades and centuries to come, just oh, that yes, one. Yes, yes, praying. I, I'm thinking all the times my mother prayed, and. Mm. Uh, grandmothers prayed mm -hmm. and it just goes right on and then my daughter is uh, has has been in ministry and still is to some mm -hmm. extent so yeah that's uh, because people will say well you know there's nobody in my family is a Christian so but mm -hmm. that's where you start that's true mm -hmm. that's, that's true it's never too late to yeah. start all right what in the world happened in your life to bring you to being a personal coach mm -hmm. Now that's new to me somewhat. That's a fairly new term. It just happens that I was born coaching people. <laughs> you know, oh. you get trying to encourage them. That's uh, that's where you encourage, try to get people to see their vision and get some discipline in there, a little accountability and work out a plan. That's coaching. You're assuming everything else is, is pretty okay in their life. But where do you want to go instead of just sitting there? And I've changed my life direction a couple of times uh, and careers also. And But, you know, we change. That's scriptural. We see how people through the Bible were started out doing one thing mm -hmm. and maybe then they turned it over to someone else. So we change. But coaching is... Uh, I'm an executive coach and a life coach. I started out going to companies and helping people, maybe women who'd hit the ceiling, uh, having difficulty uh, moving up the ladder, started with some of that, and then helping just uh, the corporation with their teams. And then a personal coaching, life coaching, is more about, hey, you know, I'm just kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to go. Things have been kind of... Okay, now how do you be... help unstuck someone? Because from what I can understand, that life coach, which is getting more and more popular, mm -hmm. that skilled life coach, uh, you direct them in such a way that they come up with the answer. You don't say, this is what you ought to do. Is that You're, correct? That, that is mostly right. Occasionally, I'll just jump in there and say, oh. okay. <laughs> Let's quit wasting time. You want to, yeah, I think I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. But it is a process. I try to get them to just take a little time each day uh, to to look at what their heart's desires are, and we have a little process. In fact, on my website there is uh, the how to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But uh, over weeks and weeks, and just see what comes up the most, because most of us have a lot of good things we want to do. But what we're looking for, or I do in coaching, if I were coaching you, for example, I'd say, what is excellent for you? Because we can't do all the good things. Mm -hmm. uh, so to keep calling it Do down. they find gifts they never had, knew they had? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Trying to have a look and say, you know, you've got, do you realize you have the ability to do this? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Or someone told them when they were younger that they would never amount to anything or they yeah. could not do that or give it up. And yet it's still the desire of their heart. But they don't know. I mean, just mm -hmm. like scripture says, uh, God often uses the foolish to confound mm -hmm. the wise. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize how valuable we are and how much we can bring to other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's part of my job. I often think of just that term, wonderful counselor. Mm. How important that counselor is. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I have kind of discovered that if you need counseling mm -hmm. from a professional, maybe, Maybe you only need to go once. That's true. Some people look at it, well, I can't afford it, and it goes on That's forever true. and ever and ever. Not true. I, Absolutely. There was a situation recently where I helped someone go to a, a counselor that I felt all they needed was just that little professional information and saves a lot of time, doesn't it? It absolutely does. I try I try to look at it, at the situation and say, let's see if we can do this in two sessions. If you want it that badly, you want to change that badly, 
we can do it quickly. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what people can do once you've made up your mind and you see the vision. See the vision. Then you can mm -hmm. make those decisions. But it does, you're right. And I have some in, in coaching. Mm -hmm. They've been doing it for a decade or more because they just love having someone by their side mm -hmm. as they move along. But yeah, it can, you can do it. I, when, when it comes to like a regular counselor, like mm -hmm. marriage counseling or something, and I know that's not your main well, field. I do. It is one of my do main you? ones. Uh -huh. um, okay, then I, I'll give you this okay. question instead okay. of just an example. I think that at some point somebody needs to say, okay, we've gone as far as we can. Go, go do the thing. So does the counselor say, I don't need to see you anymore, or shouldn't the person realize I don't, I don't need to do this anymore. It, it, it works both ways. I have people who I'll say, you know, you are just on the brink of graduating, and or I, I will taper them off. Maybe I'll see them once, or I do a lot of it on the phone. Mm -hmm. I might talk to them on the phone every so week. So you can gradually... And then wean off, because mm -hmm. they're a little nervous. Even though they got it, they're still a little nervous. So I'll say, well, let's just wait a well, month. Well, are they becoming dependent? They, yes, I guess they could, but but the but my job is to work myself out of a job. No, yeah, I <laughs> and I really believe there are people who only need a se you know maybe a couple of sessions, honestly, because what awareness is ninety eight percent of it, mm -hmm. and the desire to change. So you mix that counseling and and uh, coaching together, and you get mm -hmm. a really good combination. I I'm a strong believer in retreats and seminars mm. usually they're on one subject and it can be a jump start for your life mm -hmm. uh, if a good one's around and it's something that would meet your need you know I would really mm -hmm. try to scrounge around find the money to go Absolutely, uh, because it can save you so much time it can totally turn your life around now absolutely how when it comes to l that life coach I, that, mm -hmm. that's fascinating to me and it can be done on the phone, which is great. You could Skype, too. I, I call it virtual coaching, counseling, chaplaincy. Most people want to just do the phone. But I, you, know, you can do Skype and mm -hmm. other things. But I found a lot of people, when they're at home and doing it, they don't want to have to go comb their hair. That's right. <laughs> 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 for it to be. So, so uh, you can coach them on their appearance. <laughs> that's right. I am. So uh, phone is amazing. Now, that takes a more, a more skill. I've got to pick up on every little nuance in their yeah, voice. Yeah, because you uh, can't see their... I can't see it. Expressions. Can't see them. So, but often I've met them one time. If I've met them once, and we can do it. But uh, it's so convenient. They can do it in their office. They can do it in the car. They can do it from home. So that's nice. So you get you start working those things together. Who needs a life coach? Anyone who uh, really, you know, that's a great question. If you want to keep moving forward, you want someone by your side to help you define it and train you mm -hmm. and uh, set the goals and hold you accountable. And what you do, because people tend to get a little lazy sometimes. Uh, and it's important that they're certified. That's, that, it's nice to know, yeah, know that you're working with somebody who knows what they're doing. But mm -hmm. I work with people in their you know, work, as I said a moment ago, on how they're doing in their career. But they might just be uh, starting college. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what to, to do. Or they're stuck and they, and they haven't, they're just there. And they're mm -hmm. just there. And mm -hmm. they're not moving and they're not reaching their potential. And... So that's how we get it mixed. And you, and you try to steer them into the best use of their God-given talents. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And I think a certified person, Christian, could could recognize that. Have you ever had a, a situation where you've been able to, I guess, push the right button, and and whoever you're coaching, the light goes on and says. I could do that. I am interested in that. That's got to be so exciting. It is exciting. It is exciting to see that, and I, that's why I love my work. I'm passionate about it. But a lot of them kind of know in their heart mm -hmm. what they want. They want to be the, the vice president of this they company. They push. Or they want a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been single and they're meeting all oh, the wrong people. Okay, how do you help that person? <laughs> You've got to, again, let's go back to a vision. Define it. 
don't just be out there bumping around, t you know, taking the first thing to come. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what is a good match for you that meets with your values, your goals? Mm -hmm. You're not, you don't want to be unequally yoked. And I mean, that could go in a zillion different uh, that's areas. A, that's a no brainer. A yeah, no brainer. So, what's really important to you? before they get in a wrong relationship and then they feel like they're stuck. That's fun. That's a, that's a really fun if, area. If someone came to you and said, you know, I I just feel like I'm in a, a rut and I know that you have experience with this, what's square one? What do you do with that person? Uh, two or three different things you can do. I might just, I'll, I'll just spend time asking questions. What would you do if money were no object and you could not fail? What would you really like to do? They can usually say, oh, well, if that's the case, then I couldn't fail. Mm -hmm. And so that will get them rolling. I might do what I, it's the DISC, DISC, a personality profile, just to see what they naturally do. We can all do just about everything uh, we need to, but some things just drain us and some energize us. Is that some kind of a, a standardized test? That is, uh, it's not really even a test. It's, it's an assessment. It's used in Fortune 500 companies all over the world just to get people into the right jobs. I use it just to see what's easiest for you to Gives do. Gives you some direction. Yeah, what's yeah. easiest? Yeah. What's the most fun for you to do? What do you do that you're just, ah, you know, time flies. You look up and it's four hours later. So that's a, that's another tool. So you get the counseling. Gets their that's their you know woundedness. You look mm -hmm. at that and some things that are causing low self-esteem. Then you get the coaching in. Then after that you you got the counseling and they're feeling better and then you you, you know where you're going. But you also want the chaplaincy. I um, I bet you've got some just some great stories um. that could make you really have a sense of accomplishment because all the way through the scripture, you know, the New Testament, it's about relationship and that's what you're establishing with these people. It is about relationship and, and then the other big thing is getting over your past. So many people think, oh, mm -hmm. but I messed up so much, can I go forward? Mm -hmm. And that's the real breakthrough and that's where I take my, my experience mm -hmm. and go, oh, let me show you. You can, mm -hmm. and so that's, now, that's glorious. Also, you're a corporate chaplain. What kind of a corporation corporate, has a... Corporate, and, and, and I'm in, uh, in a program now at Florida Hospital, so I do mm -hmm. visit patients and their families, but chaplaincy in the workplace is more about people who have perhaps had a recent death in their family mm -hmm. or their spouse. They've gone through something that the employee assistance program may not typically deal with, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe a divorce, maybe, oh, here's one that most people never think of, their pet died, and oh, they're really? broken hearted, yeah. and no one, at, everybody at work's going, oh, get another, die. no, that's a, that's a heart, heart are issue. There, are there corporations that see the need for this? And There are, and airports, uh, different uh, groups like that, really? uh, some of the universities have a chaplain, but that gets the spiritual part into uh -huh. the counseling and the coaching we're talking about. What what's, the chaplaincy brings in, where is God in all of this? Mm -hmm. Now you get all of those three, the counseling, the coaching, and the chaplaincy, you get a complete uh, yeah, program. It's, um, it's just meeting somebody at their point of need. I, mm -hmm. I can't see a greater opportunity, really. Oh, it's awesome. And, and the, uh, you know, your own call, mm -hmm. that's the other thing, mm -hmm. 24 hours, because mm -hmm. people don't just have deaths in their family mm -hmm. at uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's, exactly. it's 1 a.m. Yeah. Uh, so there's so many things that affect our lives. And uh, Well, now, will you come and speak for churches or ladies groups? Absolutely. Or Love it. Uh, we've had uh, Sandy's website up for quite a while. And she wears an awful lot of hats in this in this one area, so she's got so much experience. And I, so I suggest you go to that website and uh, see what's there and the resources and so forth, because I've often said we try so hard to live our re, our Christian walk this way, mm. and God is leaning over the balcony saying, "Do it this way. My yeah. way is horizontal," and. Uh, Absolutely. So you have to do it his way and all the way through the Bible, even the Ten Commandments, most of them are horizontal. 
Uh, because if Good I point. love God, according to the Ten Commandments, because love Him with my heart, soul, everything, if I love God, I'm not going to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And if I love God, see, that's a horizontal. If I love God, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to steal from you. All of those things in the commandments, most of them right. are these relationship things. Probably not. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Some people who have already met God and love God with all their heart fall right into the pit of some of the things you've just mentioned. And those are the ones who are so filled with shame mm -hmm. that they don't know if God would have them back or if they have a future. And those are the ones that my heart really goes out to. I, I get that. Because he'll take you back. He'll <laughs> that's, take that's you back sure. uh, every I time. I mean, he is, uh, <laughs> he's always got his arms outstretched for the prodigal. Mm -hmm. And thank mm -hmm. God for people like you who have studied and know how to really deal in this one-to-one -one, mm -hmm. uh, type of situation. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's easier to preach behind the pulpit. Oh, yeah. Then, then to, uh, then to, <laughs> then to get do down the one in the and, trench. <laughs> we're almost out of time, but is okay. there a difference in a life coach and a, somebody who mentors? Mm, there a difference? I'd have to look at that. I'm sure there are subtle differences. Executive coach, I see that more as somebody working, you know, in the corporation with the people work related. But you know what? Every part of our life fits together. So if mm -hmm. there's something wrong in my life, and I need a life coach, it's going to affect my job. So that's why I try to be flexible. That's how this all came about. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be coaching, and I'd think, boy, you need a little chaplaincy and a little counseling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because it all affects your work. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in there with somebody who's having problems with their teenagers. I'll be working with them at the office. It's affecting their job. I would think a wise employer we get your card, <laughs> at least. <laughs> we are trying to educate employers to see that people are multidimensional and all those things need to be working together to have the happiest, most productive and they people will at work. Get more out of their employee. Absolutely. You know, Keep if you on. address some of these issues. Oh, yeah. Boy, it's been great to have you. Oh, it's been yeah. wonderful. You're fabulous. I love you. Thank you. Thank and you. Uh, remember, if you want one of these breast cancer awareness crosses uh, they're available just as long as they last but this is the last program I'll be offering them so I hope you'll take advantage of that <clears throat> and what a joy to bring you guests like Sandy we try to cover all the bases and I have no doubt that you've gleaned some really good stuff from what she's had to say so please please join me next time remembering there's absolutely no higher calling than that of a homekeeper God bless you If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.